Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about a very cool method, really quick, called Capture Recapture. And so the goal of this is to estimate the size, the number of things in a population. So you can apply this to biological applications, to census counting, whatever you really want. For today we'll be assuming that you are the data scientist of a town called Statsville, and you want to estimate its population n. So n is going to be the true number of people in Statsville that is unknown, and there's just way too many people to go and try to count them directly. So you need some kind of smart stats driven method to estimate this as good as you can. So you're going to use the capture recapture method. It's pretty simple, honestly. It's pretty easy to explain and understand. The first step is the capture part. Um, so this was named for biological applications. So we're talking about people here. So you're not literally going to be capturing anyone. But what you're going to do is you're going to get a random sample of little n people from the city and record their names. So you get a random sample of as many people as you can kind of reliably get and record the names on some piece of paper in your computer or whatever. The probability of being recorded is little n over big N because this is a random sample and there's n people so it's n over big N that's the probability that you are included in this first capture. Then sometime later you independently get another random sample of big K people from the city and you record their names. And then the crux of this is that you see how many of those big K people in this second, this is called the recapture, you see how many of the big K people in the recapture were also in the first sample. And you can do this matching because you recorded their names before, so you can just cross-reference. And so let the number of people who appear in your new sample, who are also in your old sample, be a little k. So there's just four numbers going on, but it's important to keep track of what they all mean. Big N is the true population size, the whole thing we're trying to solve in this video. Little n is the number of people you captured on the first sample. Big k is the number of people you capture on the second sample. And little k is the number of people in the second sample who are also in the first one. And so the probability of being recorded in this new sample, uh, recorded means that you were previously in the other sample, is little k over big k. So if you think about what this fraction means, it is the number of people who were in both samples divided by the number of people who were in the second sample, and so that's little k over big k. The final step is to realize that little n over big N is equal to little k over big k. I do think this deserves just a little bit of explanation because I didn't logically see it at first either, but both of these are basically answering the same question. The first one, little n over big N, as we said before, is the probability of being recorded in the first sample. And this thing on the right hand side, little k over big K, is the probability of being recorded in the new sample. And because both of these were independent samples that hopefully had nothing to do with each other, those two things should be equal to each other. And that's why we're able to do this equality. And then we just do some algebra and solve this for uh, big N. And we get that big N hat, hat because this is an estimate, big N hat is equal to big K times little n divided by little K. And so we can estimate the um, population size by simply just doing this formula here, and that should give us an estimate of our population size. So um, hopefully that made sense. Now we do the fun part, which is actually doing simulations of this, because this seems really nice and theoretically sound until you start playing around with possible real-life numbers and you see what kind of trouble you can get into. So I have a bunch of functions here. Um, they're all commented, so I'll just talk about them at a high level. The first function is called capture. It just captures some number of things from the population. So this is the first sample. Um, the second function is recapture. This is the second sample. Get estimated population size. Does a capture, followed by a recapture, and then does exactly that formula we talked about up there to get the big N hat, the estimated population size. And then the whole driver function for this is called simulate runs, which takes in a population size, a number of uh, people or samples to capture in the first one, first sample, the number of uh, things to recapture in the second sample, and the number of runs we want to do of that experiment. So explicitly what's going on is that we are going to say, given this population size and given these number of things captured in the first and second samples, do 10,000 runs of this process. And each run is different because we're going to randomly be capturing and recapturing things. So we want to get kind of a overall idea. If we did this many, many, many times, how accurately are we estimating the size of the population? That's what this function does. And now we do the fun part, which is just look at results. So let's say we had 100 people in the city. So this is a small city. And we were able to capture 50 in the first sample and 50 in the second sample. 
In this case, the true population size was 100 as we passed, and the estimated population size, so this is kind of a bound between which the true population size might live. Um, the way we did this is basically just take the average of all of these runs, and then we plus or minus the standard deviation from all of these runs. And visually, that's given by these red lines here. The black line is the true population size. You can see we do a pretty good job in this case. We say there's um, between 90 and 110 uh, people in the city when there's actually 100. Pretty good. Um, but let's see what trouble we get into when the population size increases to like what an actual city would be, or maybe not even there, but just increases. If there's 500 people in the city and we're still only able to capture 50 and recapture 50, then the true population size is 500, which is given by this black line. Um, but the estimated population size is now between 230 and 1,015, which isn't nearly as nice of a range as we had before. And if you scale it by the population size, the distribution also looks really funky. The reason the distribution looks really funky is because when you have 500 people in the city and you're still only capturing and recapturing 50, there's a smaller and smaller chance that people are going to show up in the second sample that showed up in the first sample. In fact, it's very possible that you might have nobody who shows up in the second sample who was in the first one if your population size is big enough. And so let's take this one level further. If there's a thousand people in the city and you're still only able to capture and recapture 50, then the true population size is a thousand and your bounds are just not great. 534 to 1968. This distribution doesn't really look like a distribution at all. So this thing kind of starts breaking. So all this is just to say that you still need these capture and recapture sample sizes to be fairly large. You can't get away with like 10 in a real population of like 10,000. Um, so that, that is definitely something to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind, and the thing I'll say before closing this video, is that I kind of assume that it's easy to get an independent random sample from your population, but it's definitely not always easy to do. For example, in your city, let's say you try to do this by standing outside the grocery store on some given day and just seeing the first 50 people that walk into the grocery store and asking for their name, and that's your random sample. All kinds of biases built into that. Um, you're assuming that the people who go to the grocery store are like a random sample from the population, but they're definitely not. And even worse, if you go to the same grocery store to do your recapture, then you're definitely just sampling from that grocery store distribution and maybe not the general population. So you might get a lot of people who appear in both samples, but that's just because you were at the same grocery store. Um, so all that is just to say that this seems real nice theoretically, but there's a lot of kind of real world annoyingness that goes on. But hopefully you learned about capture recapture in this video. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this and see you next time.